Welcome back everyone. Today we're talking about determinant and indeterminate structures and how you can tell the difference. Let's start off with some definitions. When we're talking about a statically determinate structure, we mean that we can solve for all the unknown reaction forces and internal forces using only the equations of equilibrium. Now, on the other hand, if we're talking about statically indeterminate, equilibrium is not going to be enough. We're going to need some additional equations. Now, when we talk about equilibrium, we're talking about sum of forces equal to zero and sum of moments equal to zero. So if you're in three dimensional space, this is six equations, three force equations, three moments. In this case, we'll be dealing exclusively with two dimensional structures. So we'll have two force equations, sum of forces X and sum of forces Y, and we'll have one moment equation, sum of moments about the Z axis. To distinguish between a determinate and indeterminate system, we're going to define something called the degree of indeterminacy. And I'll always label that as DOI in either case. The degree of indeterminacy tells us how many unknowns we have in excess of the usable equations of equilibrium that we have. So if your degree of indeterminacy is equal to zero, you have a statically determinate system. And if your degree of indeterminacy is greater than zero, you have a statically indeterminate system. Now, if your degree of indeterminacy is less than zero, your structure is guaranteed to be unstable. So that's not going to be usable in any case. So we'll always deal with degree of indeterminacy zero or more. So let's start our discussion with trusses. So if we count up our unknowns for trusses, we have our reaction forces, plus each of our elements in our truss has a single unknown, which is the axial force in that element. And then we have equations of equilibrium equal to two times the number of connections. So each connection has two e equations of equilibrium. We have sum of forces in the X direction and sum of forces in the Y direction. But because we're dealing with a truss, you don't get a useful equation for moments at each connection because we have no moments. So therefore our degree of indeterminacy is our unknowns minus our equations of equilibrium. So that's reactions plus elements minus two times your connections. Now let's compute the degree of indeterminacy for a few example trusses. So first we'll list out all our unknowns and we see that we have three reaction forces that are unknown, two at the pin and one at the roller. The external forcing doesn't actually matter for this case. The indeterminacy of a system is a property of the system itself. So we're going to ignore any external loads on this. So we have three unknown reactions. And then we also have internal forces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven elements. And each element has one internal force, which is the axial force. So therefore, my total unknowns is 14. Now, considering my equations of equilibrium, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven locations where I can consider equilibrium. And each one has two useful equations. So two times seven is my total number of equations. So therefore my degree of indeterminacy is zero. This system is therefore determinant and therefore I can solve for all my reactions and all my internal forces using statics alone. Now let's look at the second example on the right. My reaction forces look very similar. At my pin, I have two. At my roller, I have one. So therefore, I have three unknowns. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six elements. Notice the strange thing in the middle. That means those two aren't actually connected, so they're just overlapping. So therefore, I have six internal forces that are unknown. And if I look at my equations of equilibrium, I get one, two, three, four connections. Again, we're going to neglect this one in the middle because there's not actually a connection there. Those are just overlapping. So I have minus two times four equations and therefore my degree of indeterminacy is one. Therefore, this is an indeterminate system. I have one more unknown than I have equations to solve for that. Moving on to frames, we can take a different approach because we have a different number of equations of equilibrium. Probably the easiest way to do this is to cut our structure into a set of free body diagrams. And we're always going to cut at all the releases. So a release is where we know something specific. So if we have a hinge, we know the moment is zero. If you have some kind of slider or expansion joint, you know one of your internal forces there is also equal to zero. So we cut at all our releases and we also cut to ensure that we have no closed loops in our structure. So we'll see an example of that in a little bit. Now, as usual, the degree of indeterminacy is your number of unknowns minus three times your free body diagrams. So in this case, we have the three because each free body diagram will have three useful equations of equilibrium when we're in two dimensions. 
and that's sum of forces x, sum of forces y, and sum of moments. So again, let's consider some examples. Let's look at this system on the left first. I'm going to slice this into free bodies so that I have no closed loops. Well, I can see that I have a closed loop here, so I'm gonna cut that thing in half. I'll cut it right there. So now we can have two free body diagrams, which I'll draw down below just as sketches right here. Now we can label our unknowns on those free body diagrams. This left connection was a pin, so therefore I have two forces. And this right connection was a fixed end, so therefore there's three unknowns, two forces, one moment. And anywhere in the slice, here and here, there are internal forces that I have revealed. So I have a shear moment and axial force for each of those cases. And I'm going to make sure I draw them equal and opposite on the two sides because those forces are shared. They are equal and opposite just due to statics. And we have a similar thing up here. So now let's count up the unknowns. At this pin, I have two unknowns. And at my fixed end, I have three. And at each region where I sliced it, I have three more. So again, don't double count those. These two are equal and opposite. So there's not really only three unknowns, even though it looks like we've drawn six different things. And here it's the same deal. So we have a total of two plus three plus three plus three. So that is 11 unknowns. And then I get six equations of equilibrium. So six is because I have three equations per free body diagram and two free body diagrams. And therefore my degree of indeterminacy is five. So in this problem, there are five unknowns that I cannot solve for using statics. Now let's look at the example on the right. These circles here are hinges. And so I'm going to make sure that I slice at each hinge. There aren't any closed loops in this system, so I don't have to worry about that rule. So I'm gonna slice here, 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 and here. So let's draw the free body diagrams down below. I have a column, a beam, a column, another beam, and the final column there. And we'll start with the reaction forces. So I have two reactions at each pin, and then I have three reactions at this fixed end on the right-hand side. And then at each of the cuts, I'm going to have, in this case, two unknowns, because I know that my moment is zero at each of those locations because we have that hinge. So if I draw my forces there, I'll have two forces here, and then I have to draw the equal and opposite forces on the other side. Similarly here, I'll draw those forces. And similarly for my beam on the right, we can do the same idea. And now we'll count up all of our unknowns. So we see we have two, two, and three for my reactions. And at each of the slices, we've revealed two more unknowns. So in total, that's going to be 15 unknowns. So we see that we have seven reaction forces and that we have eight internal forces here. Now, counting up my number of useful equations, I get three equations per free body diagram. And we can see that we have one, two, three, four, five free body diagrams. So therefore my degree of indeterminacy for this system is zero. And thus this is the determinant system. So I'm able to compute all of my unknowns using just statics. Now, as we progress with structural analysis, we'll have different analysis systems for determinant versus indeterminate systems. For determinate systems, we're going to use equilibrium and that's functionally just statics. But for indeterminate systems, which frankly are much more common in the real world, we're going to have to include some new equations to be able to solve for all the unknowns. And that is all for today for telling the difference between determinate and indeterminate systems. I hope you learned something. Please subscribe. I will see you next time.